tonight. Ringing Pete Taylor's doorbell and asking, no demanding, that he give me drum lessons should be easy. But it's by far the hardest thing I've done. My feet and calves are shaking. I always thought that that was a joke. But being so scared that you shake is very, very real. My index finger presses the doorbell and the sound of its chime is like an electric shock through my body. Then it gets even worse. There's the sound of nothing, of waiting patiently. It goes on forever as I stare at the doorbell and wait for someone to answer the door. And as scared as I am to talk to Pete about drum lessons he isn't likely to give, I'm even more scared that he won't answer at all. Because I don't think I can come back and try again. Not after knowing what this feels like. Footsteps approach the door. Every ounce of blood in my body is ready to burst through my skin. The door opens and a middle-aged man is standing there with the oddest look in the universe. He's bald on top with twisted strands of black and gray on the sides. He has thick glasses, a large nose, and way too much hair in his ears. Can I help you with something? The man asks. I try to talk, but my throat closes. I'm afraid a tidal wave of bark is all that will come out. Is something the matter, he says, his eyes open and wider. I was looking for Pete, I say. That's me. What do you mean? No way. This is not Pete Taylor. If it really is, he's totally not what I expected. I guess I was expecting something a little more, I don't know, rock starry. This guy looks like a crabby librarian. I need to ask you something, I said. Could I come in and talk with you? It's not the best idea to enter a stranger's house, young lady, Pete says. You're not a stranger. Everybody knows who you are. Pete chuckles as he waves in the direction of the old lady's porch. She gives him a sarcastic smile as she waves back. I doubt that, little miss. Either way, I prefer we keep our conversation on my porch. Now what do you need? I swallow hard before asking. I like to start drum lessons. Sorry, miss, but I'm overbooked as it is. No, you're not. His eyes light up and his face gets red. Excuse me? You took on a new student just this week. You have room for more students, and I want to be one of them. Pete crosses his arms in front of him. Let's say you were right, and I did take on a new student this week. Let's also say that even though it's true that I am extremely overbooked, I might consider taking on a student who shows promise anyway. What would you say to convince me that you're that student? I freeze. He has invited me to take my drumming speech. To give him my spiel, my sales pitch, or whatever I want to call it. Why should I be his student? I haven't prepped an answer because I never had a plan. I'm only here because that old lady made me bring his doorbell. Say something cool or smart. Think, Sam, think. I have no idea what he wants to hear. But if my answer is wrong, I have wasted his time. I picture the only student of his that I know, Johnny Parker, and imagine what he would say in this situation. I've been in the middle school band for a whole year. I've played a, a variety of movements, know every percussion instrument inside and out, and can outplay anyone you're teaching right now. You can outplay that many people, he says. That's a pretty bold statement. And I'm going to be in jazz band next year, or I was until they cut the program. Pete's eyes look like they're about to pop out of his head. He clenches his teeth in anger and says, just when I thought I'd seen it all, I hadn't heard they were cutting the program. I smile. Nobody has, except me. I'm very informed, you know. That's fascinating. Pete looks at his watch and sighs. Look, I have another student arising, arriving in less than 10 minutes. Thank you for stopping by, but you have to look for another teacher. What do you mean? I mean this won't be a good fit. Try elsewhere. So, you're not going to teach me? He shakes his head. Why not? I'm the best drummer in town. Then you obviously don't need me telling you what to do. Go out and start your music career. You sound ready for it, but I'm not ready. Pete leans a shoulder against the side of the door frame. Is that so? From the way you brag, you certainly are. My fists clench and my toes curl. I want to storm into his house and start screaming. That's not what I was saying. Whatever, look, I'm more than willing to take on another student. What I'm not willing to take on is another ego. I let a student go last week. I let a student go last week because he thought that he was king of the hill and the student who replaced him didn't show up at my doorbell acting like a busybody know-it-all. You picked the wrong teacher if you think that will work in your favor. I stand there. 
My heart spinning in circles as the fire inside frizzles and drops into the pit of my stomach and explodes. Thanks, but no thanks, he says, and closes the door in my face. I stare at Pete's front door, my energy extinguished. What did I do wrong? I tried to say what Johnny Parker might have said, and the reward I got was a door slammed in my face. That's when I realized what Pete said. I let a student go last week because he thought he was king of the hill. Could it have been Johnny? Did I just screw up my one chance at getting what I've always wanted by trying to act like that jerk? I knock on the door again. I don't even bother with the doorbell because you can't show anger by pushing something. When nobody answers, I check the door, find it unlocked, and walk in. Pete is lying on the couch in his living room. The place is empty save for himself, the couch, and practice pad perched on a stand next to a set of three congas. There is no television, no stereo, no anything. Is there anything you've walked into my house un uninvited? Oh, is there a reason you've walked into my house uninvited? He asks. When you slammed your door in my face, I heard a beat in my head. I say, I imagine five different people behind five different doors of different sizes slamming them in rhythm. That's Pete hesitates before we continue. Interesting. I hear drums in my head all the time. I can't even sleep most nights because it's like having an imaginary person in your brain who won't put their drumsticks down. It's amazing and horrible all at the same time. All I really want is a chance to make those beats happen somewhere outside my head, but I can't because I have no idea what I'm doing. I've tried over and over to teach myself, and my reward was finding out what I belong in is beginning concert band. Says who? Says the only two people I know who play drums. Only they, only they don't even care about drums now that Eastmont's entire school district canceled its music program. So yeah, you're right. I was acting like I was better than everybody else. Everybody else seems to act that way, so I thought it was what you wanted. I stopped speaking, and there's silence between us for at least 10 seconds. Pete blinks a few times and says, is that it? Not even close, but I'm too embarrassed to keep speaking, I say. Wow, where did that come from? What do you actually know about drums? He says, that they're the greatest thing I've ever heard. You said you were in the middle school band. Which one? Symphonic band, I say. But like I said, I should probably be in the beginning concert band. So what? It's still music class, isn't it? I smile. I hadn't thought of it that way. Is symphonic band the only time you ever play? He asks. Yes, unless you count my desk set. He gives me a weird look and says, please explain. I try my best to describe my desk set. I tell him what books I use and what drum each book tries to replicate. He winces when I mention the Calvin and Hobbes snare drum. Wow, he says, you need some serious guidance. And even though it hurts to hear someone important definitely, definitely say that I have no clue what I'm doing, I say, that's what I was trying to tell you. At least you have some idea how to set up a drum kit, he says. I've done it a thousand times in my head. Pete leans forward and rests his arms in his lap, but no one ever really giving you a chance. Less than that, I say, do you know how it feels to spend every, every day another step further away from really learning how to play? Pete stands up and paces the room. I glance at him from behind and see that he's not totally bald. A long black ponytail hangs from the tiny section of his head that actually has hair. It's the longest ponytail I've ever seen longer than any of the girls at school, and it hangs all the way down his back, dangling at the bottom of a button-down shirt that might look fancy if it was ironed and tucked in, which is not. This is not a fad, he says. This is not a hobby or a way to pass time. Do you understand? Yes, I say. I don't babysit. I teach young drummers to become real drummers and real drummers to become really amazing drummers. He used the word dreamers. It takes all my self-control not to bounce off the wall with happiness. Yes, if I start to think you're wasting my time or not taking this seriously, you will be dismissed. Yes. He crosses his arms and says, that settles it then. Do you have any other questions before you come back ready to work harder than you've ever worked before? I'm so excited that my voice squeaks a little when I say, how much will it cost per lesson? $15 for a half an hour. I'm shocked. It must show on my face because Pete says, is that going to be a problem? No, I say, not at all. It's just, well, spit it out, Missy.
I know I should just shut up and thank him. There's no need to bring up things he hasn't mentioned, but I'm curious, so I have to know. I heard your regular rate was $30 for half the hour. That is my regular rate. I'm charging you 15 Do you think you can mow enough lawns to make that? He knows about my plan to mow lawns. I never told him, but somehow he found out. I wonder how he knew, just long enough to realize I don't really care. I, he agreed to give me lessons, mission accomplished. I feel a small tear leave my eye, and I blink furiously in hopes he doesn't notice. Any amount you earn over $15 goes towards saving for a real drum set, he says. No more practicing on encyclopedias and comic books. Once you have a real set, we'll talk about charging you the regular rate. If I find out you're blowing the extra cash on video games, you're done here. Yes, I say. 3.30 on Monday afternoon is open right now. Can you make that work? I think quickly, sorting out times in my head. Mondays are one of my dad's latest work days. Sometimes he doesn't even make it home by dinner. My mom gets home around 4.30, so I have to rush home right after. I'd also have to leave school the second, when the second bell rings. Grab my stuff from home and run to Peter's by 3.30. But it could work. It will work. 3.30 on Monday sounds great, I say. One of my biggest rules is don't be late. I won't. Thank you, sir. Another one of my rules is to never call me sir or Mr. Taylor. I can't stand the sound of either. Just call me Pete, okay? No problem, Pete. I'm serious when I say come prepared to work harder than you ever have before. I throw a lot of stuff at my new babies. A lot of them get spooked and don't show up for the second lesson. It would be disappointing if that was the case with you. I nod and offer to shake Pete's hand. He backs away and says, get that thing away from me. Handshakes are for people who know they're ripping you off. I consider this for a moment. And even though it sounds a tad silly, I don't offer my hand again. See you on Monday, he says. Now get out of here and let me finish my day. He returns to his couch and I walk out his front door and down his steps, butterflies flapping their wings in my chest. I'm halfway down the block leading away from his house when it dawns on me what I've accomplished today. The tears shoot out, full force, like I'm suddenly the girly girl my mother always wanted. I know I'm not a real drummer yet, but I feel like one for the first time in my life. And it's all because I'm going to get a chance to learn how to play. Really play.